This is what I hope to be the world's only playing B-flat octa contrabass clarinet. Now, obviously right now, this instrument isn't really complete. It lacks all but one of the keys necessary to make it play fully chromatic scale, and only uses a B-flat contrabass mouthpiece at the moment. However, this instrument is going to be the next big project of mine, and when it's completed, I hope to have not only a playing instrument, but an instrument that plays well. Now, some of you may be asking, how do I plan on building this instrument? And that's a very good question to ask. Even building a simple B-flat clarinet would be a huge task in itself. Building an octo contrabass clarinet, the largest clarinet in existence, is a whole order of magnitude more difficult and more challenging. If I were to build this instrument the traditional way, out of metal tubing and using the traditional design that Lee Bonk came up with in the 1930s, it would be very difficult, not only just for me, but for any experienced instrument builder. Therefore, my plan is to build this instrument using simplified methods and using materials that are readily available to me that are already in the shape and size that I desire. Of course, this meant using ABS tubing available from most hardware stores. Now, it may seem silly to build a clarinet, especially a professional clarinet, out of plumbing. However, it's not unheard of to build large instruments out of tubing. For example, the hyperbass flute, as along with the uh, contrabass flute and subcontrabass flute, are already built out of this exact same type of tubing. Building a clarinet out of, therefore, isn't that much of a stretch. In order to make the instrument play, I of course need a mouthpiece. Now, ideally, I would want to have a custom-made subcontrabass clarinet mouthpiece. However, for testing purposes, I will be using a B-flat contrabass clarinet mouthpiece, which will help me determine the location of the tone holes and also allow me to play this instrument while I work on designing the optimal mouthpiece for this instrument. Now, given that I am remaking an instrument that essentially already exists, I thought I would take this opportunity to make an instrument that plays better than what I presume the LeBlanc octo contrabass clarinet would play like. While the LeBlanc octo contrabass clarinet uses a roughly 38.5 millimeter bore, this instrument uses a full 40 millimeter bore for a much more powerful sound in the lower register. Now, before I give you an idea of what this instrument will sound like, I just wanted to explain what my final design will be. So the instrument will be a simplified bone system instrument, which will have familiar fingerings, however it will lack some of the alternate keys that you tend to find on more traditional clarinets. It will also have a mouthpiece receiver that will be able to accept both a standard contrabass mouthpiece and an adapter so it can accept a true subcontrabass mouthpiece, which I have to design and build eventually. I also hope to eventually have a low C extension However, for the prototype, I'm just going to be extending it to low E so it can play a full scale. This will help speed up the process of building just the basic instrument itself and allow me to have a completed instrument sooner. Now, of and course, then I can... just saying that I'm going to build an octo contrabass clarinet isn't really impressive in itself. Anybody could say that. In fact, anybody could take a mouthpiece and attach it to a bunch of tubing and call it an octo contrabass clarinet. But I want to prove that I can build this instrument, and I do have the skills to do it. So I wanted to make at least one key just to demonstrate before I announce the construction of this instrument. So this key not only serves as a proof that I can build instruments, but also shows how I plan to build the key work on the rest of the instrument. I simply repurposed a key from another clarinet and built a tone hole out of another section of plastic tubing that I glued to the main section of tubing. I then installed posts in the traditional way that a clarinet would have them on the coupling that connects these two pieces of tubing. I then installed a black leather pad that seals the tubing well, allowing the key to function properly. So next I will give you an idea of what this instrument sounds like by playing the four notes that this instrument can currently play, being low E, low F, Clarion B and Clarion C. So, as 
I'm sure you could tell, the intonation and tone of this instrument could use a lot of work. However, with this design, making adjustments to these is actually quite simple. You see, every note on the instrument is going to have its own small section of tubing. If I were to find that this note, which would be low F or clarion C, were to be too flat, all I would need to do is take this off, shave down the tube a bit, and put it back on, and the note will be more in tune. If I were to find that it were too sharp, all I would need to do is cut this tubing and add another adapter here to extend the tubing and make the note flatter. And to adjust the tone of the instrument, what I can do is I can either undercut the tone holes, increase the size of the tone holes, or I can open up the keys a little bit more so that there's more venting. So it is my hope to go through this instrument note by note, starting from the lowest note and ending on the register mechanism and A key. And by the time I'm finished, I should have a instrument that plays relatively well in tune and has good tone. So as I'm sure you can guess, this is gonna be quite a long, difficult project. However, I'm hoping that with dedication and patience and a lot of work, that this can be a plain octo contrabass clarinet. So thank, you. so thank you for watching this video. I'm going to be trying to post weekly update videos. So if you have any interest in this project, I ask that you please consider subscribing so that you can catch my progress on this instrument. Also, if you love this project and want to see it succeed, please also consider liking the video as it helps it be seen by more people. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Wind Instrument Repairs, where I'll also be posting videos and in pictures of this project. So thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.